Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios, and today we're going to be painting Groot from Marvel Crisis Protocol in comic style. Groot is a really interesting mini because you can get him to tabletop ready really, really fast. I mean, it's mostly just bark. You can dry brush it, pick out a few details, and you're done. But it's all that bark that actually makes the comic style lining take a lot of time. So you can see a lot of progress really quickly, and then it kind of tapers off. I'll be approaching this miniature in three steps. The first step of which is dry brushing. Because the miniature has so much rigid sculpted detail, dry brushing is an obvious choice for taking advantage of that. In the second step, which is definitely the shortest, I'll be detailing the miniature, picking out a few small details on his chest, his eyes, his tongue, and of course painting the base. I'll mostly be approaching this with a combination of P3 and Citadel paints, but I also use a little bit of a Citadel shade here. And of course, the last step is comic style lining. I'll be using Hagen's Black Magic for my black ink, and I'll be applying it using a Game Envy Artist Arsenal size triple zero brush. All right, Flock, that's enough preamble. Let's do something epic. Now to dry brush Groot, I'll be using the e.l.f. Cosmetics Eye Crease Brush. This is one of my favorite dry brushes, and they only run a couple dollars at a lot of retailers. You can pick them up while you're grocery shopping, which is really awesome. You'll notice that I primed Groot in a tan color. I was honestly just using up the end of a rattle can and it really has no bearing on how he's gonna be painted. I'll be applying a full base coat of P3 Bloodstone, then dry brushing P3 Battle Dress Green and P3 Hammerfall Khaki. I'll also be using a little bit of P3 Worm Green to add a mossy tint to the bark. Now I'm not actually dry brushing on the Bloodstone base coat, but I am using my e.l.f. Cosmetics makeup brush to apply it. And that's because it's a very broad, soft brush and the bristles are really good at getting into these small, deep grooves that Groot has in the bark texture. You know, I'm taking the paint straight from the pot like a heathen and I'm just making sure when I apply it to the model, I'm spreading it out as much as I can. So I'm not letting it pool up or clump up in any one area. I'm using the brush itself as a tool to spread the paint around as thinly as possible, really staining the surface as much as I can. And honestly, if you had access to an airbrush, this would be a great place to use it because even if you're not skilled or comfortable with your airbrush, it's one color across the whole model. You don't have to do any transitions, any fades, worry about spraying in the wrong place. It's all one color and whatever gets it on there gets the job done. So next I'm loading up my dry brush with Hammerfall Khaki and you can see that I didn't do a great job here of cleaning my brush off first. There's a lot of the deeper brown, the bloodstone coming up through it. I'm just letting that happen. Honestly, I'm going to go over all dry brush once with this and then just as I go back and get more Hammerfall Khaki, the color will become more pure and a little bit brighter. So it doesn't really bug me that I'm kind of just going to have to be doing this twice. I decided I wasn't getting the coverage I wanted quite fast enough, so I'm going to use a little bit more of a loaded dry brush. There's basically a little bit more of the paint left in as opposed to wiping so much of it away onto the paper towel here. And you can see I start to get some really, really quick, immediate coverage here on the face, the upper arm. It's a pretty drastic change from the base coat and certainly a much bolder step than the previous sort of 50-50 blended dry brushing. So I'm going to deviate from my plan a little bit here and make the bark even lighter. I'm going to come in with some P3 Menoth White Base. This is a bit of an ivory-ish off-white. and I'll be using this to just brighten up the bark even more than it already is. Especially because when I start to bring in the black for all the comic style lining, it's going to make the tone of the whole piece feel darker. And so I want to start from a lighter point to begin with. All right, after that little detour, we're back on track. I'm going to come back in now with the Battle Dress Green. And I'll be using this in the deeper areas here, like under the belly, behind the arms and so on, but also pulling color up from his waist up onto his torso, just to give it a little bit of a earthy, mossy tone. All right, it's time for another detour here. I decided Groot's bark just wasn't bright enough, especially in light of all the dark comic style line I'll be bringing in. So I wanted to brighten it up just a little bit more using some P3 Menoth White Highlight. It's just a lighter version of the Menoth White base. All right, the dry brushing step is done here and it's time to jump into step two, detailing. I'm gonna start with P3 Sulfuric Yellow and pick up those little nodules, those little round bumpy things he's got. And then just some of the deeper creases in the bark that are connected to those kind of give the impression of a bit of a glow coming from inside. The next few steps are really short. They're just small individual details. For example, I'm using some P3 Jackbone here for his teeth some P3 Amethyst Rose for Groot's tongue, 
do not ask me why a tree has a tongue. And some P3 Underbelly Blue for Groot's eyes. By now the sulfuric yellow in the grooves and on those nodules should be dry and I'm going to use some Citadel Fuegan Orange Shade to fill in those grooves and do a little outlining around the nodules. It's going to make the nodules a little more pronounced. They're going to have a little bit more of a brighter glow compared to the things around them. Now I'm taking a little bit of the P3 Menoth White Base, one of our dry brushed colors, and I'm using that just to line the edges of these grooves, cover up a little bit of that dark orange that kind of ended up on the exterior bark. Now you may remember when I introduced the dry brushing step, I mentioned I was going to use some P3 Worm Green to add some mossy tones, and then I didn't do that. So I'm correcting that now. I've loaded up my dry brush really, really lightly, and I'm basically using this to create some surface modulation in Groot's bark tones. So I'm just adding a little bit of a green hue here and there, not anywhere in particular, just kind of spotting it around the miniature. You'll notice that it's very subtle though, there's not very much color loaded on my brush here. Now these little branches growing out of the back of Brute's head are really fragile, I actually broke one earlier in the video here. So if you're applying color here, just use a really soft touch. Now one of the really sweet things with this model is it's table ready now. Aside from having to put some paint on the base, this is a good miniature. You could feel this as is, but I'm of course going to take it a little bit farther. Now the last detail I need to tackle before I start my comic style black lining is the base itself. And it's a pretty boring concrete detail. So I'm going to just be mixing up some grays here. To get a good mid-tone gray, I'm going to be mixing Citadel Administratum Gray with Citadel Eschen Gray. From there, the first step is just a simple base coat of the mixture across the entire base. Don't forget about the little bit of rubble around Groot's outstretched arm, so he's kind of forcing his one arm into the ground where the concrete's broken apart. I want to make sure that matches the rest of the base. These edge highlights I'm adding now are just straight administratum gray, and I'm going around the edge of the base as well as the big dividing lines and cracks on the individual parts of the concrete. To take my highlights a little bit further, I'm going to mix a little bit of P3 Mora White into the Administratum Gray and just focus on the sharp corners and a little bit around the edge of the base. This is also where I'm going to add a little of a highlight to those little inset, I guess they're cat eyes or reflectors or whatever these little things are right there. Now is a good time to also make sure I add an edge highlight to the broken rubble bits around Groot's arm. While I've got the P3 Moro white out, I'm going to add a few small highlights to the model, specifically Groot's eyes and the little glowy dots on his chest. Alright, step 2 detailing is done, it's time to jump into step 3 comic style lining. This is my favorite part, this is the part I love. I mean, This miniature is basically tabletop ready, but comic style lining just gives it that extra punch. I'm going to be using Hagen's Black Magic, my all time favorite comic style ink. If you can't find Higgins Black Magic, Daler Rowney FW Black Ink, Liquitex Carbon Black Ink, these are both really good choices as well. Another good option is Pro Acryl Coal Black Paint. It doesn't flow quite the same as an ink, but as paints go, it's my favorite one to work with. So I'm beginning the comic style lining with the base. It's the simplest piece to work on. Basically, you just want to break apart the different blocks of concrete and then draw lines around Groot where he meets the base so that it's clear they're two separate pieces. It kind of gives the illusion of Groot being outlined as well. Then work on the rubble, especially around the fist going through the base. And then lastly, I start working on some small freehand details. Little things that look sort of like coffee stains, dents, pebbles, what have you. These are just little accents on the base that make it look a little bit more hand drawn. It gives it that illustrated feel. When I've got large vertical surfaces like the inside of Groot's legs or the inside of his right arm here, I like to add a big volume shadow. And this does a lot of great things. It creates the idea of an outline when one leg is kind of viewed as a silhouette against another. It also creates an idea of depth between the two legs. And that can give you a more action-packed pose instead of flattening everything down by having flat colors. Because Groot has a lot of texture, I don't want to lose too much of that to the big shadow though, so I'm going to basically start following the smaller grooves with some additional lines here. And at this point, I'm just going to start working my way up his legs. Groot has a whole lot of detail, a whole lot of texture, and I'm really just taking advantage of that. I'm following the sort of the long, almost like viney-like structures, just with a quick little line in between them. As they get closer to that big shadow in the middle of the leg, I'm making them just a little bit broader to kind of embellish that shadow. And where there's tiny little sort of like cracks and gaps, I'm just filling it in with very small black lines. I'm just going to continue repeating this process across the whole miniature, just accenting the detail that's already there. 
What's great about the dry brush base coat is I've got this deep kind of reddish brown, the bloodstone, anywhere there's a really, really deep recess. And I can use that as a guide for where I want to place my black lining. So in my head, comic style lining breaks down into about four distinct parts. There's big volume shadows. There's the lines that separate different parts of a model from each other. There's the lines that follow natural grooves and curves in the model. And then there's freehand detailing. And in my head, there are four distinct steps and I teach them as four distinct steps. But generally when I'm painting, because I'm now so familiar with those steps and how I want to approach a miniature, they kind of all amalgamate into one process. And you'll see me create a volume shadow, then I immediately pull some hatch marks out of it to create some shading. And that comes with familiarity. Now in this video, I'm skipping a lot of the line work process, and that's because it's a very time consuming process. This miniature took about two hours to paint and 90 minutes of that is just black inking. If you are curious about the line by line process of inking this entire miniature, that video is actually available unedited on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash epic duck. It's roughly two hours long. There's no audio with it. It's just the raw video that I've worked from here, but it makes a really good companion to this piece. If you want to just dive in and see how individual parts of the model were worked on. Okay, so here I'm revisiting the idea of big, bulky volume shadows. One underneath Groot's pecs, a little bit more in his belly, and then underneath his left arm. Groot's got this very hunched up, kind of leaning forward pose, which creates a lot of big shadowed areas in his midsection. And they're areas that you don't really see, and even if you do, by creating a bigger shadow there, we create more of a sense of depth and more dynamic motion. And here again, we've got another volume shadow, this one underneath the branches at the back of his neck. And again, I'm really using that solid block of bloodstone to let me know where that shadow should live. So here I'm following a curve that starts at the back of Groot's head and basically becomes his cheekbone and kind of right down to his front teeth. It's all sort of one continuous line here. You'll see I'll actually draw the shadow underneath his teeth. I'll come back and line those later, but for now I just wanted that one continuous line to kind of move all the way through the face. Some similar details start up at his forehead and basically form Groot's eye socket. Want to make sure we leave that nice crisp white orb in the middle, but basically surround it in a little field of black here. So that's going to be a line underneath and a line above, and then just carrying that line out to the corner of the eye and then up a little bit into the grooves of the wood. So I'll be working on Groot's teeth here in a second. It's just a straight black line above and below the teeth just to isolate them from the rest of his face. And you'll see I completely screw it up. The good news is it's an easy fix. I've just made the black line a little bit too wide and I can just cover part of it up with some white later. One of the last things I'm doing here is embellishing the shadows by having them kind of bleed out onto the rest of the mini using a series of parallel hatch marks. Okay, I know I said this video is gonna be in three steps and this is clearly step four. This is just me doing little touch-ups at the end and tiny little details I forgot about. Right here, I'm taking a little bit of Menoth white base. I'm actually just cleaning up a spot where I smudged some black ink across Groot's arm. It was completely unintentional. I basically just got a fingerprint in there, so I'm just fixing it. And of course, while I'm at it, I'm taking the opportunity to go in and fix Groot's teeth where my line work was just a little bit too heavy handed. And the finishing touch, the last thing I like to do with almost any mini is painting the base rim. It just feels like it's complete once I've done this. And it feels like cheating if I do it too early. And there we are, we've got Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy in all of his comic style glory. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and until next time, do something epic. I just want to take a moment and thank everyone who has supported the creation of this video and many others over the years. My patrons over at patreon.com slash epic duck, my Twitch subscribers, and just my loyal fans. There's been a huge outpouring of support, especially for comic style painting, but just everything I do in general, there's people behind me. I can't do this without you. I appreciate it so much. Everyone, your names are all over here. You know who you are. Everyone who's helped make this happen over the years, who's kept food on the table, kept the roof over my head, kept the lights on, kept the stream going. I appreciate each and every single one of you. If you want to join the flock, you can do that at patreon.com slash epic duck. Five bucks a month gets you access to some behind the scenes stuff, gets you the unedited versions of these videos, PDF guides, and my eternal gratitude. Thank you so much.